four tips for success are as follows. Tip one, believe in yourself. Oh, Jim, we were expecting something much more highbrow than believe in yourself. But let me tell you the importance of belief in yourself. We can be modest and humble and, and gregarious and likable and all the rest, but we can be terribly poor at showcasing our skills, at exuding self-belief and self-confidence. And the reason I believe that people struggle with this is because there's a very fine line between self-belief and arrogance. There's a very fine line between the two. I'm sure you can appreciate that. Self-belief, you know, I believe these are my skills. I'm good at these things. I want to showcase them and develop them to the best of my ability. I acknowledge that these are my weaknesses. I want to improve upon them. Someday they might be strengths and over in this pile. And I'm committed to trying and improving these areas, learning, developing them. But I'm willing to put myself out there, showcase my skills, exude self-belief, self-confidence, and generally put my best foot forward, second cliche. Two in about half an hour, that's not bad. <laughs> Versus arrogance. Oh, I'm amazing, I'm awesome, all oh, you guys are useless. Um, I'm fantastic, there's nobody better than me. There's a difference, there's a massive difference between self-belief and arrogance. But well, there's not one thing wrong with exuding self-belief and having self-confidence. Not one thing wrong with it. There's plenty wrong with being arrogant. But there's not one thing wrong with believing in yourself. So tip one, believe in yourself. Tip two, focus on what you want. Okay? Remember the guy who didn't even want to start the application form until he had this focus on winning the apprentice. Aha! Jim, we have found you out. You didn't win the apprentice. Loser. <laughs> Interestingly, folks, I'll give you another analogy and come back to the apprentice. It's like the guy who writes the book, writes a book and says, I want to sell a million copies of this book. And people think, yeah, right. Oh, of course. Yeah, you go and sell your million copies. And it transpires that in his first book, he sells 976,463 books. Okay? Do you think he's annoyed that he didn't sell a million? No chance. Do you think I'm annoyed that I didn't win The Apprentice and finish as one of the runners up? Well, a little bit because everyone likes to win. I admit that freely, I was disappointed. But I can say this with the benefit of hindsight, four months down the line, that because I was focused on what I wanted, that finishing, almost there, runner up, next best thing, I'll take that. It has transpired to be the best thing that could have happened to me personally. The opportunities that you get, everything on a spectrum from, hi, my name's Josh, I'm seven, I'm from Sheffield, me and my friends have made Jedi Gym face masks for my birthday party this weekend. Please come to my birthday party. P.S. I'm sure my dad would give you a job. Two, hi Jim, we're a multinational company. Come and work for us. We don't even need to see your CV. We loved what we've seen on The Apprentice. And you get all these opportunities in between that you don't get if you actually win. And interestingly, and just to bring you up to speed, I took one of these opportunities most recently. I'm the director for a company, director for Ireland, for a company called Groupon. And it's a really exciting and fast growing company. And not winning The Apprentice has sort of landed me a, a dream job. Interesting. So focus on what you want. Another cliche or analogy, if you shoot for the moon and you fall short, you may land among the stars. But focus on what you want. And people will say to me, ah, but Jim, I don't know what it is that I want. What I would say to that knee-jerk reaction is, make that what you're focused on. Make finding out what it is that you want, what you're focused on. Stay open to opportunity, keep your eyes open, stay enterprising, stay entrepreneurial, and find out what it is that you want. Keep that your focus, and when you find out, focus on it, and keep moving towards it. Because if you fall short, you might sell 976,463 books. You might finish runner-up in The Apprentice, or you might find another path or an alternative ending that is actually better than what your focus was initially. <coughs> the third point, be positive and persistent. My wife thinks I don't live in the real world because my glass is not half full nor half empty, it's overflowing. 
And that's my attitude, whether times are good, bad, or indifferent. And it works for me, and let me tell you why I think it might work for you. If anybody can convince me that being negative is better than being positive, good luck to you. You know, the whole, oh, life's terrible, it does rain. Oh, I hate life. Oh, oh I miss my boss. Oh. Well, who wants to be around that? Nobody likes that person. That's the person at the bus stop, you're like, okay. <laughs> be positive. Seek out opportunities. You know, chest out, chin up. Be positive. <coughs> Embrace scenarios and different situations. People will be attracted to you, not just physically, but possibly as well. People will be attracted to you. They'll want to work with you in teams. They'll want to be part of your gang. They'll be inspired by, by your positive attitude, by the fact that no scenario is too challenging. I possess a skill, I believe, of being flexible, and it ties in directly with being positive because I face adversity. I have challenging times. I travel too much. I don't sleep enough. I don't get as much fitness as I would like, and my eating habits are rocky at best in the last while because time is so demanding for me. But I try to stay positive. I really, really am committed to staying positive, you know, really embracing opportunities, thinking, what's the opportunity in this for me? That's not being mercenary. That's being opportunistic, and there's nothing wrong with that. The reason why I say you have to be persistent, I said be positive and persistent, you're almost thinking, no, I can do the positive thing, Jim, but I can't do the persistent thing. But let me tell you why you need to do both. Two things happen when you're being Mr. or Mrs. Positive. People try to chip at and knock away at your positivity. Ah, you're not as good as you thought you were. Oh, you finished runner-up? You know, people will chip at and knock at your positivity. And it can affect you. And the second thing that happens is we can chip at, ironically it's strange, but it's true, you can chip at and knock at your own positivity, self-doubt. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should just hide off here in the corner. And maybe I shouldn't put myself out there. So that's why you have to be persistent with your positivity. The fourth point I leave to last because it is certainly the easiest point. It's the most natural, easiest thing to do in the world. It'll come so naturally to you, it's a piece of cake. Very good. <laughs> Be yourself. Okay, what do you mean by that, Jim? I made up for the cliche or saying to emphasize this point. If you fake it, you won't make it. In business, in life, in relationships, whatever. If you fake it, you won't make it. And the reason why that is true is that we're very good, we've got all got very good internal radars of saying, that person's making that up, that person's being disingenuous, I don't trust or believe that person, that person's trying to be like that other person, why don't they just be themselves, be yourself. It's the natural easiest thing to do. Uh, but, but I don't think I'm good enough, the person I am right now. Well, okay, there are maybe areas that you need to develop, remember these weaknesses that you need to develop and improve upon. But do it by being yourself. Admire other people, aspire to the things that they have achieved and the qualities and skills and behaviours that they possess. That is fine. But don't be them. Use your own inimitable style. Let the individual within you set you apart from everybody else. That will give you your unique selling point. That will help you to be different by being yourself. But yet acknowledging that other people have got skills, attributes, behaviours that you would like to develop in your own way. Be yourself. I can't stress that one enough, but all of them I'll recap and I'll drum home one more time if I may. Believe in yourself. Focus on what you want. Be positive and persistent. And indeed, be yourself. It just remains for me to say that hopefully this was a benefit to you. I wish you all the success in whatever you do. Employment, self-employment, whatever you choose to explore. It only remains for me to say before Q&A, um, thank you. I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. Cheers. Take care.